Welcome to Northern Sangyong's e-brochure series. This time we're going to have a look at the Sangyong Action Dual Cab Sports. Hope you enjoy. This dual cab has been around in various forms in Australia since 2004 when the Sangyong Musso was introduced. Using fairly old technology but good and reliable 2.9 litre turbo diesel, it was fairly popular because of its largeness and its cabin size at the time compared to the other vehicles, its coil rear suspension, its turbo diesel economy and its space in the rear seat. This theme has continued right through the next two models of the Sangyong dual cab and the Action itself was introduced in 2007 and then this new model came out in 2012. In 2007 they went to a common rail two litre diesel. It took a fair while for the Australian market to understand that a two litre motor can have as much torque and power this is what six cylinder engines can and this delivered quite a powerful, economical, reliable motor. A lot of the other brands around the same time come across to what they call the CDI motors. Uh, the technology that Sangyong was using was Mercedes-Benz technology and the engines and the blocks and things like that all come out of the same factory but since then Sangyong's developed from that it derived a new engine and this engine there's many improvements right through on the mechanical side and the, the breathing and the intake side, but the most significant is the variable turbo, a variable vane turbo. And what this does, this vehicle is 360 newton meters of torque, which is quite considerable. It comes in very low, it comes in at only about 1500 revs, and this then flatlines out to 2800 revs, so it doesn't have any of those peaks that you may get out of a turbo engine, especially petrol or, or uh, old style turbos. Uh, the variable turbo just takes it into another level. This is all computer control. Uh, so it's not just generated by revs, the torque, it's generated when it needs it. The engine, the ECU, talks to, in this case, a transmission control unit, and that generates and says hey we need some more torque here so please give us some but don't rev your head off so the old days of the four cylinder turbos being just a little rev box are definitely gone um, if you get the chance to drive one of these you'll notice that the revs stay very low even under load it's not too often you see them getting up at the two and a half to three thousand revs which is significantly well away from the red line of uh, four and a half thousand revs so really does very very little work and they're coupled now to either the six speed automatic transmission that's made here by drivetrain international at albury or it's the other option is a six speed manual so there's plenty of gears for it to choose from and make sure that it doesn't have to do too much work a quick overview of the models it comes now in two levels the tradie model and the sx probably you might the sx would be the most popular model it has the alloys over the tradie. It has traction control, ABS. Uh, it has alloy wheels, five alloy wheels, including the spare. It's got a headlight adjuster and a few other small bits and pieces. But just overall, it's a little bit neater package, especially one of the most significant things is the cruise control. The tradie, uh, you might call the entry level, plain steel wheels, no cruise, no traction control but still has a lot of features that other vehicles are only in their mid to high level have and standard as a tub liner um, it's still got full electrics central locking it's, even that central locking goes through to the tailgate and this is pretty important especially if you're running a canopy there's vehicle brands out there that you can put a canopy on them but you can't lock the tailgate so Anyone can walk up and basically open the tailgate and get into whatever is inside without having to smash or break a window. And these generally are opportunistic and not planned. Uh, they just go and have a look, and if there's the opportunity there to, to steal something, they will. It's not a big step up in dollars from the 
tradey through to the SX and I think that's what makes the SX so popular with just those extras including that cruise control etc um, it's it's worthwhile spending the extra money the SX also has the feature in the manual of a hill start control this is all coupled up to your stability control system and ABS system what that will do if you've got a steep takeoff like you had a set of lights or somewhere on on a reasonable gradient top of hill or kick in and if you've got your foot on the clutch you can actually take your foot off the brake and it'll hold there for a matter of a couple of seconds until you either release your uh, clutch or you turn around and operate the brake etc again. Other features that are standard across the range is your front fog lamps uh, pretty important if you're in a uh, foggy area or country driving and these uh, are lower, they're down below the head level of the headlights so they don't reflect too much into the fog. Um, they've also got, because the vehicle is so solidly built, which we'll discuss a little after, uh, your tailgate has got a spring assist on those hinges. Now, I've not seen it on any other vehicle, it was optional on our previous model, but it's standard on this, and that's a penalty that the vehicle's so well built panels like that tailgate are very heavy to lift up if you're doing it all day if somebody's regularly in and out of the back of the ute someone such as a tradie or a delivery person or whatever and these come with that hinge lift and it's uh, definitely a big plus and a big bonus so it's well thought of for the, the new look of the Sengyong Action Sports Ute um, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye than the previous model there's no doubt Sengyong have always been unique and a little bit individual with their vehicles uh, it's a little bit more mainstream this look and you'll see it right throughout the range now that the Corando similar style and the new Stavik is similar style so much in fact in the home country of Korea or South Korea the, the Sangyong Ute is called a Corando dual cab Corando sports and the Stavik people mover is also a Corando Turismo so that theme is going right across branding and we'll see that more and more over the new models as they release from Sangyong. Okay let's talk about some of the features, interior features and probably the first thing and most significant is the seating because that's where you're going to be comfortable, where you're going to be happy. If you're not happy where you're sitting over a good long drive then you're not going to be happy with the vehicle. The front seats are firm but comfortable and that's what is echoed by all of our customers. I don't think I can remember anybody saying that they've they feel uncomfortable in the seat and this is very important if you are doing those long drives that uh, some people do especially country people that might be two or three or four hours drive into the city if they're going there or if you're somebody who wants to travel around Australia or quite often like I do on longer fishing trips the rear seats are also comfortable and that's important because most dual cabs are a little bit awkward in the back but it's a little bit of um, pinch a bit here rob a bit there give a little bit in the front seats or whatever um, even some of them with the longer tubs well it's good the, the room's got to come from somewhere and it's usually the back seat but not so with the Sangyong and they've also what they got what they call cathedral rear seating cathedral uh, it's not so much as a religious term but what it is the rear seat sits a little bit higher than the front seats gives a little bit more leg room for the passenger and better vision rather than looking just straight at the back of the heads they can see over and around uh, the front drivers a little bit better and gives that feeling of more room especially as kids you know they do grow up most people buy a dual cab and they look at their four or five year old children and think yep that's all right they can fit but if you're keeping the car for three or four years well those four or five year old children are seven or eight nine years uh, that's when they really start to hit their growth spurt again you don't want people complaining they've all got central locking it's a remote central locking um, as I said it remotely locks the tailgate but the doors also lock between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour uh, they automatically lock and this features really um, about car anti car jacking that we see in a lot of other countries we don't it's not too bad here in Australia probably the most significant is women uh, getting their handbags pinched off the front seats you know, they stop at the lights and somebody opens the door and wham, away they go. There goes their uh, handbag, credit cards and also their confidence. So uh, it's a nice feature. Back onto the seats. The, the driver's seat 
has also got a great adjustment in it uh, that you can actually tilt manually the base or the swab of the seat backwards and forwards. And the other thing about the seats on Sanyongs is that they don't crimp on the swab. They're not a short swab base of the seat. Some cars, especially in dual cabs, they tend to have a shorter rear seat. And with the shorter rear seats, you know, they pick up an inch or two. It makes it look like there's more room in the back when really there's not. In fact, they take it from um, the, comfort the comfortability of the seat. And if you're really only travelling mainly with four people, again, the rear seat has got a fold out armrest, um, something you normally don't see in your seats, you've got more certain upmarket sedans, uh, but pretty handy if you just need somewhere to rest and, and lean against, and they're, they're, they're solid, they're not flimsy, so again, feature for feature, uh, the Sengyong seems to come out tops. Okay, we'll, we'll run across the controls and we'll try and work from our right hand side across the dash to the left hand side, and one of the highly used options in, in any car nowadays is electric mirrors and they've got a very good easily placed position here where you can just reach down with your right hand and you can operate those mirrors left right up and down uh, on the sx model there's a switch there that you can turn the traction control off um, i'm not really sure unless you've got an odd size wheel why you want to turn a traction control off but uh, the feature is there they use the European style um, stalk lights indicator operating system so therefore on the right hand side you've got your wipers and the wipers are good to variable mode as normal and you know you're low and you're high it's nice and easy fingertip control what they do have is a three different way of using your washer jets from your bonnet to wash back onto your screen and you've got your normal wipe or a dry wipe without the washer, just a simple flick and the way it is, it's a, it's a dry wipe. You can push it upwards, the stalk upwards, and what happens there is you'll get your normal squirt of water and the wipers will do two or three wipes. Something that I've only ever seen on Sanyongs, it may be available on other cars, but I've just not noticed it. It has this repeat wash where if you press the button at the top of the stalk, it will squirt a very good, powerful jet of water onto your windscreen. It will start operating the wipers. They'll do it seven or eight times. And then at the end of the cycle, they'll give another wash with a couple more wipes um, just to wash that dirt and dust. So it reduces that need to do it twice like we always seem to have to do, uh, especially when they're dirty. Uh, the cruise control is on the side of the steering wheel. It, it follows the steering wheel around and it's fingertip control. It's right really is right there at your fingertip it's an instant cruise you can just set it by placing it down into the set mode and away you go it's it's cruising it's you don't have to turn it on or off etc and easy to increase your speed set it back on a coast mode or reduce your speed if you find you're creeping a little bit up over the limit on the other side of the steering wheel you've got the headlight stalk um, pretty much normal high low beam pull it away push it away um, park lights and you've also got the control for the front fog lamps but that operates as your indicator so remember it's a European style left hand pretty simple you get used to it pretty quickly if you if it's not something you've used regularly in that type of European style still following across something else that Sanyong seem to have that's unique and this is right across the range in both your tradie and your SX. And not only do you have a rear demister on the back, but you've also got heated side mirrors. And these winter mornings that we've been getting here in Melbourne over the last few weeks, it's been very handy for me just to get into the car, hit the rear demister, and at the same time as the mirrors are warmed up and then they clear or defog, whatever you want to call it, and away we're going and you're not really restricted with your vision, which is pretty important in heavy traffic not as important probably out on the country road but definitely in a heavy city town type of traffic as well as that and it's more a winter item it's areas where you tend to get a lot of frost or ice or whatever like that Sanyong have incorporated in all their models a windscreen de-icer um, now it's not the whole windscreen it's just that lower part pretty much where your wiper blades sit so you can flick that on and within a couple of minutes 
um, any frost will at least um, drop it away from there and there'll be no chance of your wiper blades stuck to the screen and uh, that we, wiper blades is something that in our service department it's just a have to do because you know you want a clear vision um, we've got good cars now big windscreens but they do rake they are an odd shape so clear uh, clean wiper blades fresh wiper blades so you don't want to be damaging them and that de icer definitely does, does it there's a trip meter um, the trip meter is actually in the dash um, but the switch is here on the left hand side of the steering wheel and not only does that show you your distance traveled give you a bit of an idea in your fuel consumption um, it is only just a guide remember that uh, but it's a handy guide I think the most important one of any trip computer is distance to empty so if you've, you're traveling somewhere and it's happened to me a fair bit you've got you know 100 kilometers to go and you can look down at the fuel and it says you've got 105 or 95 so if it's 95 you know to back off and you're driving a little bit just try and squeeze a little bit better economy out of it or you may even have to turn around and go back to the last available in fuel station you know, cross. In the four wheel drive you will have um, a four, the four wheel drive switch here on the right hand side of the centre dash. It's an electric four wheel drive selector, it's not a mechanical, it's not an extra lever so you just uh, flick it across in either neutral or park. Uh, they say you can do it on the fly. But I'm not a big advocate of changing something like that while you're moving so my advice pull up, put it in neutral or park flick it across, put it into four high or continue right around and put it into four low. The four wheel drive system is a part time four wheel drive system so you should not be driving it on bitumen or hard surfaces in four wheel drive. It's really only for mud, gravel, um, areas where you do need to get that extra traction, maybe snow. But Remember, don't drive this four-wheel drive, any, any part-time four-wheel drive system on hard uh, bitumen. Now, the rest of the controls, um, heater, air conditioner, uh, standard and all the vehicles, um, but a very effective heater, I can tell you, you don't really want to have it much up above so number two on the fan, it heats up pretty quickly. The big thing about these controls is they're great big controls, you know, there's, there's none of this fiddling, you just go bang, bang, you can do it while you're driving and not have to really concentrate and uh, it's easy to feel the increments recycling in normal air conditioning so all oh, that's fairly standard above that I've got the Bluetooth compatible stereo when I say Bluetooth compatible it means you can operate it with um, Bluetooth phones none of this holding of phones and dialing or answering um, and it also has what we call streaming so if you've got a one of these smartphones and, and you store some music on it for example I think I've probably got 900 songs on my phone um, you can play your music through it as well without worrying too much the radio it's integrated and there's no way you probably need to really swap it unless you're right into your stereo and you don't see that too often nowadays because radios are fairly um, good quality um, you, you know, obviously normal AM and FM but you can also if you love your music put your music onto a USB stick um, plug it in and play from there or alternatively you can play from one of these iPods or whatever there is a USB jack and an auxiliary wiring jack there on the dash as well so and above that well just your normal clocks um, have a look at the clocks They're a little bit unusual you think gee that's strange but when you work it out uh, just because of the way that it displays it displays the air separately to the minutes and it makes it very very simple to read um, also you've got a good size glove box which nowadays when we've got airbags um, we're losing a little bit of that type of space to the uh, airbag but fair enough but we've got a good deep glove box in it and overall when you really look at it especially when you look back across it's very easy to read, very easy to operate. In fact, the dash is an illuminated dash, so even in daylight, um, you can read it very, very clearly and crisply. Um, the other controls which we didn't mention were the ones that are here on the steering wheel. Um, I'll, you've got your Tiptronic controls, which I'll go over a little bit after, but that's for selecting gears when you're in the manual mode. And we've also got your full radio controls 
uh, your volumes, your, your station tuning, um, a mute mode, so if you need to quickly just hit the button with your thumb and turn the radio or the music off for a second, you can do. You can select your AM and FM and auxiliaries up on here, and even more importantly, as a feature, just here on the side of the steering wheel, you can actually turn the radio on or off. So there's none of this again, reaching across of your radio trying to fiddle around with buttons and things. Again, the buttons, the controls, they're nice, they're large, they're simple to use. And we did go through um, a trend a few years ago where things started getting more and more buttons that you never ever used and fiddly things. But Sangyong, very, very practical, very, very easy to use, very, very easy to read. And that's something that's important while you're driving. Now, some of the convenience features that Sangyongs have, uh, they've got independent map reading lights that will operate from the door, both lights here at the front. They've also got another interior light that can be operated by your rear passengers and will open and turn off the doors. Pretty much a normal item, but when you've turned around and you've got two lots of it, it's a bit of a plus. Again, it's all about practicality. They've got mirrors on both drop down on the sun visors. Again, you think it's standard, but it's not a lot of vehicles, especially base model vehicles, don't even have a single mirror. And that's one to keep the wives happy, I suppose. Um, they've got sunglass holders up here in the center console, or roof console, which is a fairly common item now on motor vehicles, but not so much on utes. And what's the difference between a ute and a car? You still need somewhere to put your sunglasses and a few of the other items. Center console, they've got drink holder here in the center console. It's got a removable ashtray. Great little pocket there in the front of the console. That's where the USB is also stored, but I find it's handy. It's a good size to put your wallet or your phone or whatever. Um, good pockets in the side doors of them. Um, so overall, they're fairly well fitted out for a ute. Uh, most utes, as I said, even the top of the range Come pretty basic items just because they're treated as a ute. But, uh, one of the highest selling segments of cars in Australia is dual cab utes and single cab utes too, I suppose. But the dual cab ute uh, is pretty pretty popular model, and as I said, there's plenty of them. Plenty of them out there on the road, so why shouldn't they be treated as a private car? Because that's what most of them are being used for. Back to the transmission. If you're looking at the manual, it's a six-speed forward gears and one reverse. Same with the automatic, but the automatic, which is a DSI gearbox built here in Australia, that's not only an automatic, but it's a Tiptronic. Um, I don't see a lot of use for the majority of people with Tiptronics, but to explain, Tiptronic means you can flick it across from the auto into a manual mode. You can use a switch that's on the center of the gear selector to go up and down, up and down through your gears. And in the case of the Sangyong Actions here, there's also the option of controlling that transmission up here on the steering wheel, so you don't even have to leave the steering wheel if you don't want to. I'm, I'm, I tend to be a person that steers with one hand most of the time, uh, except for cornering and that, it's, etc. But um, it's, they are they are handy. But realistically, if you buy the automatic, let the computer do the job. The computer knows what it's doing, and in fact, it's a computer that's in the gearbox that does most of the driving nowadays it's not the motor it doesn't receive you know the, the directions from you via the throttle on whether to go faster or not if you put your foot on the throttle that's no longer an accelerator pedal it's an accelerator switch it's an electronic switch it talks to the the gearbox and it says to the gearbox are so they putting their foot down steve's putting his foot down he wants to go faster obviously give him some more power that's not the way that it works, it's the transmission receives it. Transmission says, oh, Steve needs to go faster. Let's see, do we need to change our gear ratio? Do we need to tighten up on the gearbox? Or do we need to, at the last minute, ask the motor for more power? Same thing, coming to a hill, the gearbox feels the, the actual pressure from the weight of the vehicle trying to go up a hill against gravity. So therefore, the gearbox decides what gear it should be in. So. Most of these cases we recommend to people nowadays to buy an automatic. It's not about the price. Um, it's more that that's what the car is designed to do. Okay, let's cover what these vehicles are like to drive. And that's where it all comes down to it. The Sangyong 
the Ute is very smooth. It's got a double wishbone front end. And it's got a multi-link coil rear suspension, which normally in Utes, especially this style of thing, are a leaf rear, but not the Sangyong, and it's been the way all the way through from the Musso, which makes them much more comfortable, a lot smoother. They don't have that jerky reaction, especially when empty. And most of the time, Utes are driven empty, no matter what we think. The power I've discussed before, 360 newton meters. Um, it's a good, even power that will drive through this six-speed auto nicely. Um, you, there's no jerks. You can hear here we're just driving along, changing gears, hardly any movement or jolting of the vehicle. And the current model turbo diesels, I mean, you can hear the microphones picking me up, but it's really not picking up the sound of the vehicle as it accelerates, decelerates, and changes gears. So that makes them just an absolute gem to drive. I want to talk about the economy of these vehicles. And you're talking about a vehicle here that's in a manual just under 2,000 kilos and just over 2,000 in the automatic. Yet, combined economy manual 7.3 litres per 100 k's, 7.6 litres per 100 k's with the automatic and you really if you go up to the four wheel drive it's only about 0.2 of a litre per 100 k's for the combined economy and that obviously you'll get a lot less if you're out in the open roads uh, you're not doing that city stop start type driving or combined so when you consider that the vehicle is well over that average weight and all sitting because they're so solid at two thousand kilos it's very very good going on economy the weight of the vehicle is also something that makes the Sangyongs a little bit nicer to drive uh, if you've got a good solid vehicle on the road you're not getting blown around by the wind trucks buses and things like that you, you know solidly that where you point the car it's going to really um, go in that direction and it's pretty important that you have a nice car to drive as I say over the long distances the turning circle 6.22 meters minimum uh, 6.22 look that's fantastic when you consider it's a big vehicle and we quite often take people into those tight um, courts around the dealership in the, in the suburb around the dealership where we can find and people get very amazed at how well they how well they do uh, drive or how tight they turn towing 2300 kilo that's with trailer brakes now if you consider that, that it's going to tow probably most of your double horse floats with two horses, majority of boats, caravans, tandem trailers. We've got a lot of people that do travel around Australia with these, they use them for towing their vans and that's because they're comfortable, um, they're economical and they pull well. And you know the overall package is very, very good. Have a listen to this, we're going to drive ourselves up this steep hill here and you'll even hear the motor if you can hear it change gears while we're going uphill just there it did it and again as we get about three quarters of the way up here it'll change up the gear the revs will drop and you can see what really the torque is generated from this motor well I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you some good information now come down to Northern Sangyong, 420 Grimshaw Street, Bundura, have a test drive, you'll be surprised.